Hi, welcome to Still Design. Today we will discuss about the design of flange bracing. So why flange brace is required? Okay. So flange brace is required to stabilize the inside flange of unrestrained beam when in compression. For example, see this is a beam and its flanges are unrestrained then to stabilize the flanges we need the flange brace. Now what is the unrestrained steel beam? So unrestrained steel beam are beams whose compression flange is free to move or displace in the lateral direction and also free to rotate. If, if you see in the image that is a unrestrained beam and its flanges are free to rotate and displace also okay so these types of beams called unrestrained steel beams now if we see the unrestrained beam example if you see that is a simply supported beam and one point load is applying at the center so if you see the flanges are buckles in sideways and in a torsional fashion okay so that is the example of unrestrained beam now how to restrain these compression flange okay so in steel bridge girders we provide straining with the help of strut member and bracing at the compression flange something like that if you see that is a steel b bridge and the compression flange is restrained by this type of strut member and bracing member okay and in another example if you see that type of steel bridge girder where you can see the both top and bottom flange restrained by the strut member and diagonal members okay now in pb we provide restraining with the help of flange brace at the compression flange if you see in that image the compression flange is restrained by this flange brace now what to do if top flange is in compression as per IS 800 on top flange restraining what it says the close number 8.3.5 says that purlin adequately restrained by sheeting need not to be normally checked for the restraining force required by rafters roof truss or portal frames that carry predominantly roof load provided there is a bracing of adequate stiffness in the plane of rafters or roof seating which is capable of acting as a stress skin diaphragm so in case of pv is top flange is restrained by purlins okay and the purlins is connected with the seating okay so that in that case the top flange not to be checked for the restraining force correct now is 800 close 8.3.4 what says if bottom flange straining member FBC are more than one okay for beams which are provided with members giving effective lateral restraint at interval along the span the effective lateral restraint shall be capable of resisting a force of 2.5 percent of the maximum force in the compression flange taking taken as divided equally between the point at which the restraint member are provided. Further, each restraint point should be capable of resisting 1% of maximum force in the compression plan. Okay, so what that clause says, if there are multiple restraining points, okay, then that 2.5% of restraining force, flange force to be equally divided between them, but each restraint point to be checked for the 1% of maximum force in the compression flange correct for example if you see that is a PB rafter PB typical rafter and you see there are numbers of flange brace or we can say there are number of restraining points okay in that case if the restraining points are more than two okay so 2.5 percent to be divided equally in those points but each restraining point to be designed at least one percent of compressive force of 
flange correct so if there are more than two fbc then each fbc to be designed for one percent of the maximum force in the compression flange correct now calculation of flange force how we can calculate the flange force for that if we let's see rafter size is 500 into 6 means web is 500 web thickness is 6 mm and flange is 200 mm wide and the thickness of flange is 10 mm in that case if you see the scheme web is 500 flange is 200 mm wide the maximum moment which is coming m is equal to 500 kN in that rafter for that 500 kN we have we will calculate the flange force so the section modulus s for this rafter is 1 to 4 1 triple 0 mm cube area of bottom flange is nothing but 200 into 10 mm 10 mm is the thickness so it's 2000 mm square now as per bending equation we all knows that bending equation is m upon i is equal to sigma upon y so stress at bottom flange shall be sigma is equal to m into y upon i or we can write is m upon s is equal to 500 into 10 to the power 6 divided by s s is nothing but the section modulus is equal to 402.9 newton per mm square so the flange force is equal to sigma into area of the flange so in that case our flange force is coming total flange force is coming 805.8 kilo newton okay so now design of flange bracing for that flange force which we have already calculated we will design our flange bracing see that is the arrangement of our flange bracing okay so here if you see the vertical dimension from the bottom of rafter which is connected with a bolt to the top of the flange brace which is also connected to with the bolt to that purlin which is coming 510 okay it will vary from rafter to rafter it depends upon what is the depth of your rafter correct and the horizontal dimension from the bolt to bolt distance of that flange bra brace is coming 693 okay for that dimension we have to calculate the flange for flange we have to design the flange bracing okay so as we have already calculated the maximum flange force is 805.8 kN. okay then the one percent of that flange force is coming around 8.06 kN. now the flange brace slope v is equal to 510 that is the vertical dimension okay so it is 510 mm flange brace slope horizontal slope which is 693 mm now the component of flange force in fbc we can calculate with this formula which is is equal to 8.06 which is the 1% of flange force divided by number of fbc at that brace point see if you are you are giving uh, flange brace at both side of uh, rafter then their number of brace fbc shall be 2 if you are designing on only single fbc one side fbc you can say then that number of fbc at brace point shall be only one okay into under root vertical dimension square plus horizontal dimension square divided by horizontal dimension okay so after calculating this we get the flange force component in fbc is coming around 5 kilo newton okay so our fbc to be designed for this 5 kilo newton compressive load only so that's all about this uh, how we can design our flange bracing